For this video, we are going to look at how to find the experimental probability. This is also known as the empirical probability, so if you're asked to find either one of those, um, depending upon the text that you are using, um, some textbooks call it experimental while others call it empirical probability. Um, in experimental probability, you have to do some sort of experiment in order to, um, in order to calculate this probability. It could be a poll that was done. It could be an event like rolling a die or flipping a coin and recording the results. Um, so regardless of the probability that you are looking for, what the experiment is, we read this formula as the probability of event E. And event E, like I said before, could be many different things. It could be the results of a poll. Maybe you're looking for a specific outcome. You're maybe looking for the people that agree um, with a new law that's going to be passed or with a politician. It could be something like rolling a die or flipping a coin. So what you would do is the probability of event E is equal to the frequency of event E. So whatever you are looking for, like let's say for example that we were looking for rolling a 5 on a die. Um, maybe we rolled the die 12 times. We'd expect to see about two fives, but sometimes we may get three or maybe even four fives out of the 12 rolls. Um, so we would record how many times we got a 5, and then we would put it over the total number of times that we completed the experiment. So the shorthand notation is just F, which represents the frequency divided by N. It's the same thing as the relative frequency that was found um, in other videos that I have done. So for this one, uh, we have um, a survey that was conducted in one of my classes. There were a total of 40 students who were polled, and I asked them if their political leanings were liberal or to the left, moderate or kind of in the middle, or if they tended to lean more to the right or if they were conservative. Uh, the results are given in the table below, and we're going to specifically look for the probability that the next person, like if I were to ask another class um, and what their leanings were, Based on this study of the 40 people that were polled, what is the probability that the next person I ask is liberal? Okay, so for this, what we would do is we would use our formula. So we would say the probability, and I'm just going to write in liberal. I could define a random variable to represent the liberal, the response of liberal. Okay, so I would look at this and I look specifically at the category that I'm looking for. So if I was looking for moderate, I would look at this one. So the total frequency of students that responded that they leaned to the left or that they tended to be more liberal was 14. And then we put it over the total number that were sampled. So I would put it over 40. You can always leave a probability as um, an unreduced fraction. It just tells us that 14 out of 40, this gives us our in, our sample size. So if I leave it like this, we know that we only pulled 40 people, so we wouldn't put a whole lot of weight in this being actual or for the larger population. Um, this is a pretty small sample size, but it was what I had to work with. You could also reduce it to 7 out of 20. Again, in some situations, it's better to leave it as an unreduced fraction just because that gives you your in or your sample size so you know exactly how many people were polled. And so then we could say that um, if we wanted to, like if we were trying to express this um, to a larger scale, uh, most people understand percentages better than they understand a fraction like 14 out of 40. So we could convert this to a decimal, and if I do 7 divided by 20, I end up with 0.35 or 35%. So we could say that the probability that the next person polled Um, is liberal is 35%. So the probability that the next person polled responds that they are liberal is 35% based on my sample. Again, this is not concrete. This is just based on a sample of people 
And since it's a small sample, you wouldn't want to put it to a much, much larger population. Um, because I was teaching at a community college, I might try to say that the probability of the next person polled at the specific community college that I teach at is 35%. But again, it's one of those things that you have to be careful about overreaching your results to a larger population. Uh, we could also, like I said, just as easily find the probability of somebody responding moderate. So if we wanted to find if we were asked for moderate instead of liberal, we would just do the 19 over 40. Since this cannot reduce, I would leave it like this. And this ends up being 0.475 or 47.5%. And we could do the same thing for conservative. And for this one, um, this was my least response. So this one would have the lowest probability. Um, for this, it ends up being 17.5%. So we could say that based on the findings from my classes, um, students tend to be less conservative and more, li or they seem to be the most moderate. Um, but again, this was just findings from my class, so I would not take and put this to a larger population of saying all people. Um, I would say like the next person polled um, at my school would be 35%. As always, thanks for watching.